baggage handlers at the airport have their part to play in keeping air travel safe. One of the things I like to do is carry out my own personal security checks. Not part of our official remit, is it, Dad? No, boy, but I feel it gives the public peace of mind, you know. All right, what we got here? Yeah, that one looks good. Which one? Yeah, the Louis Vuitton, yeah. That All right. One, yeah. Right, OK. Oh, I've got a lock on it. Ah, that's no bother. There we go. Right. Oh, hello. Yeah, you see now, very common is the laptop. This could have illegal images on it, so we'll uh, take that home for further analysis. Right, what else we got? Hello. Gucky. Now, the thing about the shoes, you can have explosive devices in the heels, so uh, we'll also take them home. Plus, they're my size. Here we go. Very common problem, this, the iPod, yeah. Now, you're not allowed to have these on, on takeoff or landing. Yeah, but you're not going to be able to use it. It'll all be in the hold. Right, the principal, son. Right, what we got in here? What's it? Chain L, pour on. No, you're not allowed liquids on board, so, uh, yeah, we can set that down there. Oh, there's an aerosol in here. You're not allowed them. You should take that out. Hey? Eh? We're not going to get nothing for that down the market, are we? Silly sod. Right. That one's good to go. Although the strike is grounded on flying airplanes, other airlines are operating as normal. On this great British air flight to Florida, economy is packed, but first class is deserted. Well, it was going to be a quiet day anyway. We only had two passengers booked into first class, and the passengers in question have just cancelled, which is a dreadful shame. Hi, Penny, did you get the message? Yeah, such a pity they cancelled. No, 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 no. The message about helping us out in economy? Piss off. Penny hasn't had to work in economy for 20 years, but today she has no choice. When you draw back the curtain, uh, the first thing that really hits you is the stench. And it's the stench of the working man. I mean, they're virtually like apes. You know, so if you, if you come at them with some food, they start attacking you. Hot towel? Hot towel? Hot towel? I'm all right, thanks. No, you should take a hot towel. I, I don't want it. No, you need to take it. I told you no. Right. <clears throat> yeah. What the... Ugh. Hot towel? Shepherd pile mushroom risotto. It's two hours into the flight to Florida, Shepherd's and Penny is struggling to come to terms with her new environment. <laughs> oh, don't touch me! The noise, the people. There's only one word to describe them. Savages. And I just poked my head in the laboratorium. It's positively medieval in there. Ladies and people of cattle class, may I have your attention, please? I have just returned from an inspection of the onboard convenience. And, and one, one of you has left it in a revolting state. Who didn't flush? Come on. Who didn't flush? It was someone who had the mushroom risotto. Hands up if you had the mushroom risotto. This whole frightful situation would never occur in first class. People in first class don't forget to flush. They're very diligent flushers. And if they do, it doesn't matter, because their stalls are perfectly formed and odour-free. Our Lady Air cabin crew member, Fergal, is desperate to win the Steward of the Year competition. But on today's flight to Barcelona, he's being less than attentive as he's waiting for the nominations to be announced. Well, you're not supposed to have your phone on during the flight. It can interfere with the aircraft's navigation system and could cause the plane to crash. But this is obviously a very important call. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for flying Our Lady Air. We're about to begin our descent, so please fasten your seatbelts and say three hill Mary. Excuse me? Yes? We've only been in the air for 40 minutes. We can't be landing in Barcelona yet. No, we are. We're landing at Shannon, Barcelona. Shannon, Barcelona? That's it. But Shannon's an island. Yes, madam. In order to keep our fare prices competitive, we do sometimes land at airports a little further away from the city centre. But we're landing in Ireland. That's nowhere near Barcelona. Oh, no, don't worry. A short coach transfer to your final destination is included in the price of your ticket. Shannon de Ross Lair, catch the ferry, down at Dover, over to Calais, through France, across the Pyrenees, and into Barcelona in time for your evening meal. Which evening? Tuesday. That's absolutely... Uh, excuse me, can you watch your language, please, madam? No, I'm just... I don't want to have to use the restraints. Hello? Hello? 
I don't know. Can you turn the thrusters down? I can hardly hear. Thank you. Yes? Really? Oh, that's fantastic news. Thank you so much. I'll see you there. Yes. Excuse me. Yeah? You're not allowed to use mobile phones on an aeroplane. I could report you for that. Oh, really? Well, I've just been nominated for Student of the Year. So shove that up your fat arse. Meanwhile, in baggage handling, the strike is having an unexpected effect. I'm all for going on strike, me. We don't work for Flylo, Dad. Yeah, but solidarity, though, innit, boy? With my Flylo brothers. Well, what about all those cases from Lufthansa? No, nah, point the principle. Won't touch them. Right, I'm off. Where are you going? Going home, boy. Well, when you get home, can you do your washing up? No, nah, mate. I'm on strike, innit? I? It's 10 a.m. and back down on the ground, the airport's flying school has a very nervous visitor. Would you like to come in now, please? Happy Burger employee Tommy is determined to follow his dream of becoming a pilot. And today, he has a make-or-break interview at the flying school. Great. Name? Tommy. Tommy what? Tommy Reed. Age? 20. 22. Two. 22. Aye. Current occupation? Burgers. And what is your main responsibility? Oh, buns. Qualifications. Do you have any GCSEs? Uh, well, you see, we don't have GCSEs in Scotland. We just have standards. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have any standards? No. Do you have any hobbies or interests? No. Come on. Must be able to think of something. Oh, <laughs> no. Finally, do you have any medical conditions that would prevent you from becoming a pilot? Fear of flying. I think it went really well. In fact, I didn't think it could have gone much better. I wouldn't be surprised if they let me fly a plane tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> did I get it? I'm sorry? Did I get it? We'll write to you. Oh, no, don't do that. I can't read. I think I got it. 41. At the pub, Ray has decided to host a quiz in a last-ditch effort to keep his customers for more than six minutes. Lady's sidekick, George Carter. Don't shout it out, just write it down. Question 42. A sporting teaser for you. How many Darvish Championships has Eric Bristow won? Question 43. Cockney duo Chaz and Dave had four top ten hits. Can you name them? Come back here. Right. Where are you going? Right, leave that. What nickname was given to the former England cricket captain, Ian Botham? Get off me, woman! Right, you've got a plane to catch. This popular Irish broadcaster was the first presenter of the BBC One quiz show, Blankety Blank. Hey! Who played Aunt Sally in Words of Dummage? Hey! How many years has EastEnders been running? Hey! Who wrote the Daily Mail cartoon strip Fred Bassett? Hey! Miss Carrie on Radio starred in Bless This House. Who played Mayor Flatwood in Coronation Street? Which celebrity hairdresser married 60 from Chris Lulu? Penny's flight to New York is just minutes from takeoff. Look at her. Disgusting little piggy. Oh, look at him guzzling champagne like some filthy backstreet whiner. Hmm, excuse me. Would you take a photo of us, please? Right, that's it. Right. What have we done wrong? Lewd behaviour. Excuse me? Loutishness, coarseness, and all round general euclidism. Come on, on your feet, chop, chop, out. Uh, we're not going anywhere. You've been nothing but rude to us since the moment we got here. Air rage, air rage, air rage, air rage. Unfortunately, I had no option but to have those two passengers ejected from the plane. Stand up, please. Stand up for me, please, My recommendation will be that they are banned from all future air travel. So perhaps next time they're on a plane, they'll think about their behaviour. Well, they won't be on a plane, but 
You know what I mean. Tommy came to the airport to pursue his dream of becoming a pilot. But so far, he's only made it as far as Happy Burger. Yeah, it's going really well. I'm not a pilot just yet, but I have got three stars on my name badge. Uh, this one was for being here a week. This one was for putting the cheese into cheeseburgers. And this one was for mopping up sick. In fact, they're so impressed with me, they've actually made me be assistant supervisor. So now it's my job to train up the new staff. Can I have a burger, please? Burger? Burger. Press burger? Press burger. Onion rings. Onion rings. Onion rings. Press onion rings? Press onion rings. I do still like to have the supervisor with me, just to make sure I'm doing it right. Fries? Fries. Fries. What size fries? What fries size? What fries fries? Small. 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 Press small, then. Press small, then. Strawberry milkshake. Strawberry milkshake. Chocolate milkshake. No, strawberry milkshake. No strawberry milkshake. No strawberry milkshake. I have to be careful, though. If I get too many stars, there's a danger I may become overqualified to be a pilot. Can I have the code for the toilet, please? Can I have the code for the toilet, please? Can I have the code for the toilet, please? 295. 245. 361. By way of apology for the previous debacle, Flylo offered us a very good deal on a package holiday to Colombia. Now, as soon as we came out of Bogota... As soon as we came out of Bogota Airport, Peter was bitten by a rabid dog. Within minutes, he was howling and foaming at the mouth. My first thought was, can I have Peter put down? I looked into it. Well, the doctor said it was unethical. Yes, thank you, Peter. But the doctor said it was unethical. Peter became more and more ill. I had diarrhoea and was projectile vomiting. Peter, don't be so cruel. Sorry, Judith. Peter had diarrhoea and was projectile vomiting. If you'd spun him round, you'd have thought he was a Catherine wheel. So we decided... So that I was... decided that the best course of action was to take the first plane home. Now, while we were waiting at the airport, a very charming man called Carlos approached me and offered me $5,000 to take his briefcase through customs. I had reservations. Peter had reservations, but we were saving up for a loft conversion, so I said yes and gave the briefcase to Peter to carry. Well, we learned it in England. Peter, if I could just get a word in edgeways. Sorry, Judith. I should hope so too, Peter. When we landed in England, Peter was stopped at customs. They searched the briefcase and found 20 kilograms of cocaine with a street value of half a million pounds. Peter was arrested and is looking at a prison sentence of no less than 12 years. If I had to make the holiday out of five, I'd struggle to give it more than three. Every day, thousands of items of luggage pass through the airport. They are sorted by handers like John and his son, Terry. Now, this ain't the easiest job in the world, this. Uh, all people do is moan about us, don't they, Dad? Yeah. They say we're always on strike. Or always stealing stuff from the luggage. Yeah, but if we're on strike, we can't be stealing stuff from the luggage, can we? And if we're stealing stuff from the luggage, well, we must be at work. So the idea that we're always doing both at the same time is just not true. Yeah, people moan that their bags always end up in the wrong places. See, the thing is, if we're supposed to get a bag on a flight to New York and we miss it, we just sling it on a plate to Delhi. Then at least that way, the passengers got the peace of mind of knowing that their bag has left London. Yeah, and the cases are getting heavy up. Oh, yes, yeah, a nightmare. Some people can't go abroad without taking the kitchen sink nowadays. Well, I ain't a problem for you. You don't lift no cases no more. Now nah, I put me back out 2003, so I don't lift no bags no more. Nah. Now, nah, I'm lucky not to be in a wheelchair, me. Yeah, you was only lifting an umbrella. Yeah, and a wooden handle, though. After Jackie's outburst on the plane, she and Simon have some news. Yes, I decided that the best thing to do was for us to separate. Well, actually, I said it first. Yeah, but I thought of it before you said it, so technically, Simon, it was my decision. Yeah, I mean, we're still working together, obviously. Uh, we're still living together. We've only got one bedroom, so we're still sharing a bed. The only difference, really, is that we're not physically intimate with each other. Well, we haven't been for five years anyway. No, so I've just started dogging. Really? Yes. It's very nice. Where did you do that? In the cul-de-sac. What, and other people are there having sex? Yes. We're all having a gay old time. Anyone I know? I don't know. I've only seen them from the waist down. Also having lunch, 
are the passengers on Fergal's Our Lady air flight. We're flying to Rome today, so I put in a special food order for all the wee Italian folk on board. For starters, we eat melon with palm spam, then spaghetti hoops, and for dessert, a cornetto. We were meant to have some nice Italian red wine, but it didn't arrive, so I'm just giving everyone a card in a ribina. Right, who's ready for lunch? Will you be dining with us today? Will you be dining with us today? Uh, yes, please, uh, but I ordered a special meal. That's right, 17 D, Mr. Ahmed, yes, I have it right here. There we are. Thank you. Oh, uh, excuse me, uh, I ordered the halal meal. What have I given you? Uh, you've given me a kosher meal. Well, it's all the same, isn't it? No, no, uh, halal meal is for Muslims and the kosher meal for Jews. I think you'll find there's only one true God, and that's a Christian God. Enjoy your meal. Will you be dining with us today? Will you be dining with us today? The early morning Our Lady air flight from Cork has hit turbulence, but cabin crew member Fergal is quick to reassure his passengers. Hello. Is your name Holly? Your mommy tells me you've been feeling a wee bit scared, is that right? Yeah, she just gets a little bit frightened, especially with all the turbulence. Oh, you don't need to worry about that. That's just like a wee little pocket of air, like driving along a bumpy road. Yeah, you see? Yeah? Mm. And I've got somebody who's going to look after you. Would you like to meet him? Yeah? Hello, my name's Brandon O'Bear. I'd like to be your best friend. Oh, <laughs> say thank you. Thank you. Mm. 35 euro. There you go, that's gate 11, okay? Who's next, please? Meanwhile, back at check-in, it's a very special day for this happy couple. Where are you flying to today? Disneyland! Los Angeles. We're getting married in Disneyland! Oh, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Right, just need to ask you a couple of security questions. Did you pack the cases yourself? Yes, we did. Unfortunately, we didn't receive any help from the seven dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> and do your bags contain any sharp objects? No, only the bare necessities. <laughs> We both love Disney, don't we, Jeff? It's all right. We've actually bought a personal DVD player with us so we can watch the Aristocats on the flight. We watched that one last night. Yeah, but you do actually have to watch the Aristocats more than once to really appreciate the nuances. It's a great film, the Aristocats. I shouldn't really like it because I am actually allergic to cats. Yeah, she comes out in a rash. But luckily, these are cartoon cats, so they never come out the screen. I'm telling you, when Bambi's mother died, I cried every day for a fortnight. I'm sorry, Jeff, I'm not putting myself through that again. Oh, look, can we go in there in case they've got something Disney? It's a chemist. Yeah, but they might have some Winnie the Pooh panty pads. Come on. Why do I like Disney so much? Mm, probably because I'm quite thick. Ian Foote is the airport's chief immigration officer. His job is to prevent illegal immigrants from entering the UK. Working in immigration, you do sometimes get labelled with the racism tag. I do take my job very seriously, but I'm not in any way racist. In fact, one of my best friends is friends with a man who's black. And he's very black. Oh, yeah. Man, he's black, yeah. Earlier today, Ian stopped a passenger at Passport Control whom he believes is trying to gain unlawful access into the country. Do you understand why I have brought you here? No, I don't. Well, it's clear to me that you've got a forged passport. No, I haven't. Oh, it's a forgery, all right. Very good one, I'll grant you that. But uh, there is one slight giveaway. And what is that? There is no such country as Liberia. Yes, there is. It's in Africa. Oh, in Africa, you say? It's on a map. Look on a map. All right. I will look on a map, yeah. I think I'm going to enjoy this. Uh, right. Liberia, you say? Yes. Yes. Right. You got a new one, Chris? Liberia. Right. Africa, Africa, Africa. Right. OK. So, Mrs. Mumbutu, would you be so kind as to point out the location of this so-called Liberia? There. Oh, yes. Just hidden underneath Sierra Leone. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you in this time, but I would advise you in future to travel with a large atlas or globe so you can prove to people you haven't made up your country. Good day. This is disgraceful. 
Right. You are a very ignorant man. Right. I am disgusted by the way that I have been treated. Okay. May I leave now? Yes. You have insulted the people of my country. Yeah, I'm actually on my lunch break now, so anything else you say doesn't really count. Oh. I don't know what rattled her cage. Mm. 